And joining me now to discuss the highlights and the impact of the candidates' rallies today are two guests. Jason Palmer is a former Democratic presidential candidate and Jim McLaughlin, a Republican political strategist and public opinion expert. Thank you both so much for joining. Uh, Thanks. Trump and Harris both holding rallies in uh, the Western states today. Harris is in Phoenix this afternoon with uh, musical guest Los Tigres uh, del Norte and in Reno with the band Amana. Tonight, Jennifer Lopez will reportedly appear at the Harris rally in Las Vegas. Jason, as somebody who has run for office, how effective are these star-studded rallies in engineering uh, voters? I think they're really bringing out more people to come see Kamala. So they're drawing on a different audience and especially a younger audience, most of these artists. And that's really, you know, getting the energy into the audience before Kamala even comes on stage. You know, I was just at the rally in DC a few days ago. There were multiple musical musical artists that played there. And it really does kind of create an energy in the crowd that makes it feel festive, that makes it feel like we're all in this together. And, you know, Jennifer Lopez, you can't get any bigger than that. Jim, with just five days until Election Day and more than a million early ballots already uh, cast in Maricopa County, what does Harris need to emphasize to sway some of those maybe undecided voters in these battlegrounds? Yeah, she has a really tough sell in Arizona. If you've seen the latest battleground polls have Donald Trump ahead there. And the reason why is the two most important issues by far to voters there are one, the broken border, which she was the borders are, and she broke the border. And two, is inflation and affordability issues. So what's happened is on the two issues that matter most to the voters, Donald Trump has a significant advantage over her. And it's really it's really tough for her to do. It's why she's actually run ads where she's hugging Donald Trump and she's talking about the fact that she actually supported Donald Trump's border wall. Trump uh, holding a rally in Albuquerque, New Mexico, surprising uh, quite a few folks, and was also in Henderson, Nevada this afternoon. More than 800,000 people have voted in Nevada with registered Republicans reportedly outpacing Democrats and other voters in the early turnout. Uh, Jim, we'll go back to you. Nevada is potentially a bellwether for the country. What is different this year from previous presidential elections? Look, and we're seeing this in not just Nevada, not just Arizona, but also New Mexico. Donald Trump is doing significantly better among Hispanic voters than, quite frankly, any Republican has ever done. And in some of these states, we're actually seeing him not only do well, and be tied, we're actually seeing him ahead among Hispanic voters. And that's why he's there. And and folks ask why Hispanic voters, in many cases, they're the ones that are most upset by these failed open border policies. They know exactly what's going on. They took the trouble. They took the time. They know how hard it can be to come into this country legally. And they went through the process. They hate the fact that people are jumping the line And they also understand better than anybody, a lot of times these folks that are coming into the country, that are breaking our laws to come into the country, they're not the people that we want here. And they're not the people that are going to further the American dream, as well as they understand the economic price that the country is paying as a result of Kamala Harris's failed open border policies. Jason, I'm curious how you're reading into these trends. Uh, President Biden won Nevada back in 2020, but Trump now holds a slight edge over Harris. Um, What do you make of this? And can Harris ultimately pull a victory out of Nevada, do you think? I do agree with Jim that at this moment, if you look closely at the polls, and he's a pollster, so he knows it very well, both Nevada and Arizona, Kamala is in a catch-up situation right now. And that's partly why she's out there. Um, Having spent a lot of time in Nevada myself during the presidential race, though, I would disagree with Jim that, you know, it's more than half of Hispanics that are moving towards Trump. It's it's, what's really true is that there's a wide variety of people who are Latino or Hispanic. It depends on if you're someone who's coming from Venezuela and fleeing communism there or whether you're someone from Mexico, whether you have people in your own family, you might have mixed status in your own family. And so I've found the Hispanic community to be very pro-Democratic Party and very pro-immigration reform. 
And right now it's kind of mixed as to who has the stronger immigration policy because Kamala has said she will sign that bipartisan bill as soon as she's elected into office. Whereas Trump's policy of evicting 15 million people, that actually has a lot of people scared because many people live in families where people are of different status in your own family. And so that policy has really turned off a lot of people, not to mention the recent gaffe with Puerto Ricans, which are Americans already, but also part of the Hispanic community. Speaking of gaffes or capitalizing on them, uh, Trump rolled up to a rally, as everybody saw, in a garbage truck last night wearing an orange high-vis vest. I want to play a clip. Crooked Joe Biden finally said what he and Kamala really think of our supporters. He called them garbage. No way. No way. My response to Joe and Kamala is very simple. You can't lead America if you don't love Americans. That's true. You can't be president if you hate the American people, which I believe they do. Now, uh, President Biden's office, the office of the president, clarified that he was mixing up his words a bit and referencing a comedian at a Trump rally. Uh, But many Trump supporters may feel that uh, Biden and Harris do think less of them. Jason, how should Harris respond to Trump's rally comments that we just heard and the way he's positioning her as out of touch with everyday Americans? Well, first on President Biden's comment the other day, there's a reason why President Biden is not the candidate. If you listen to that complete uh, comment from him, it's such a garbled mess. It's really clear that he you know, should move on from the presidency and we need a new president in Kamala Harris. Now, even in D.C. just a couple of days ago, Kamala was talking about unity, about how she'll be a president for all Americans. She didn't sound like Joe Biden at all. In fact, she was talking about how she'd be very different than Joe Biden, that she's a change candidate, that she's going to have a Republican in her ca- in her cabinet, that she'll actually invite people from the other side to not just be part of the discussion, but have a seat at the table. Now, I'm actually pretty glad that President Trump is actually saying the same thing now. He's talking about unity. That's a very different tone than he's taken for the rest of the campaign. And that could serve him well in these closing days because a lot of people are turned off when he has been putting down the other side and talking about the enemy within and all these other negative comments, which really drive people away from Trump. Jim, Trump's rally uh, showing up with a garbage truck was certainly eye catching. It went viral. How much does this resonate with his base and could it influence undecided voters as well? I'll tell you something. That's what uh, Donald Trump's detractors and and the establishment and the elites, they really don't get, they don't understand. Donald Trump has a great connection with middle-class America. He's got a great connection with working-class Americans. I always tell folks, he's not just the leader of the Republican Party. He's the leader of a political movement of the forgotten middle class. And look, unfortunately, This isn't the first time where Joe Biden has actually said bad things about the American people. He's called people that oppose him Trump's losers. We all see the Nazi and the fascist comments that are going on right now. And Joe Biden once said said 15 to 20 percent of Americans just aren't good people. So, look, this is Donald Trump saying, I've got your back. And he's also saying, look, we're going to make things more affordable in this country. We're going to secure the border and we're going to make the world more safe. Vice President Harris continues to uh, tie Trump to the Project 2025, which he has denied and has tried to create space. Um, You know, she basically says that Trump would implement a national uh, abortion ban. Here's what uh, she said. Trump's not done. He would ban abortion nationwide. Yes, even here in Wisconsin. And he would restrict access to birth control, put IVF treatments at risk, and force states, listen to this, force states to monitor women's pregnancies. Just Google Project 2025. Jim, Trump has created space, or at least tried to, with Project 2025, disavowing a lot of what's in there uh, and some of those policies. This is still a major talking point, however, for his opponents, as we just heard. 
How can Trump address these concerns without alienating uh, certain voters? It's really easy. All Donald Trump has to do is tell the truth. And look at even newspapers like USA Today. They said the fact that Donald Trump supports Project 2025, it's totally not true. He has nothing to do with uh, Project 2025. And it just goes to show you how desperate the Democrats are. And I'm going to quote USA Today again, is they said Donald Trump doesn't support a national abortion ban. These are the kinds of things that you do when you have a desperate campaign, when you have a failed record, you have to lie about your your opponent. And, you know, it's really, really interesting because remember, it wasn't that long ago after the Democratic convention, the Harris campaign was telling us they were going to run on joy and vibes. And now they can't talk about their accomplishments. They can't talk about a vision forward. Why? Because their policies are just so extreme. They're just not popular and they're not selling with the American people. Jason, I'll give you a chance to respond. Also, Harris is emphasizing the potential threat to abortion uh, access and related issues. How effective is this messaging with women voters and how much weight is abortion carrying uh, this election? Yeah, it's carrying a lot of weight this election. When you look at the early voters in Pennsylvania, there have been 100,000 early voters there who've never voted before. And the largest group of those new voters are women voters. And this isn't just Pennsylvania. This is actually a trend that's been noticed all across the country, that more young women, especially Gen Z women, are getting registered and they're choosing to come out and vote early both for the abortion referenda that are on the ballot in 12 states, but also for Kamala Harris. This is probably the time when I most disagree with what Jim was saying there. When uh, President Trump tries to say that Project 2025, you know, he has no idea what it is. He hasn't read it. I actually believe he hasn't read it because the guy didn't read his intelligence briefs when he was president. But J.D. Vance wrote the the forward. His vice presidential candidate actually wrote the forward to Project 2025. And more than half of the people that actually contributed content to 2025 were members of the Trump administration before. So no matter how much Donald Trump tries to say, this isn't my policy, this isn't what I believe in, everybody knows he put three justices on the Supreme Court who overturned Roe v. Wade, and it's his goal actually to make it the law of the entire land. In fact, there are so many Republicans in Congress talking about that. It actually sounds like a mixed message to most people that is Trump really telling the truth? What does he actually believe? And I do think that's why Kamala is trouncing him pretty strongly when it comes to women's rights and abortion. Jason Palmer, Jim McLaughlin, uh, really appreciate both of you sharing your insights with us. Same. Thank you. Thank you.